Oh, hi, Amy. Thanks for joining today's interview day. Hi, nice to see you. Good evening to you and to everyone watching. <laughs> All right. Uh, can you tell me in our study in Korea dreamers about yourself? Sure. My name is Manata Panyawatanasin, or you can call me Amy. I am from Laos and I'm 18 years old and currently studying my Korean language program in Daegu University. I applied to Songgun Kwan University with business and administration major. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, did you uh, know about my channel when applying for GKS? Yes, in fact, I was watching your channel the most <laughs> while applying for this scholarship. I actually look for so many videos of like people who make contents about GKS and I come across uh, Mr. College Concierge and your your channel is actually very informative and very educational which you gave a lot of tips that actually helped me to apply for the scholarship. You had useful tips, you had interviews, you had so many tips that I used and applied in my application. Oh, that's, that's great to hear that. <laughs> it so, is. Um, so I, I helped you uh, become selected for GKS. I think so. Yes, you were a part of it somehow. Yes. Oh, I'm I'm so I'm so honored. <laughs> All right. Um, tell me more about it later. Um, now let's mm -hmm. talk about general questions about GKS. Sure. Uh, how did you How did you know about GKS or KGSP? Ah, well. At first, I, I really want to come to study in Korea initially. So I looked for scholarships, like uh, what scholarships does Korea offer? And I come across this article in Facebook where my senior, she received KGSP. So I was so happy that I saw that my senior received a scholarship to Korea. That is how I came across KJSP for the first time. I think it was back in 2018. And I messaged her like, oh, what is this scholarship? Uh, is this scholarship to Korea? Uh, what does this scholarship offer? And when can I apply for it? Do I have to know Korean, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, did, 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 she, did she or he? She. Did she um, help you? Did you did she give you some tips? Uh, well, I mm -hmm. yes, she I asked a little bit of questions as well, but uh, I I really don't want to bother my seniors too much, so I didn't ask a lot. However, the tips that she gave me were very very useful in my application as well. I usually um, research on my own with the contents that people post either on YouTube or blogs and articles that I would read. And I ask like other uh, people as well from like other countries. Okay. Yeah. Um, then let's see. Did you become selected for GKS on your first try? Yes, uh, I actually plan to apply for GKS since I, I haven't graduated, which is in 2018-19. Uh, however, I regretted not learning Korean beforehand, but uh, I applied my, initial, my first application and I got selected on my first try, which is very, very, I'm very proud of myself. Lucky you. Thank you. Um, did you apply through the embassy track or university track? I applied to the embassy track. Oh, then uh, what are the three universities you chose? Uh, for the universities I chose were Yonsei University, Songgunkwan University, and Kaemyeong University. Just three of those wow. universities. Um, 
did did all of them accept you? Well, Yonsei unfortunately did not accept me. Uh, I believe they accepted two candidates this year, which is very tough for a lot of people who apply to Yonsei University. However, I got accepted to Kim Yong and Song Min Wan, uh, which Song Min Wan is what I uh, is where I initially wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy that they accepted me. However, it was a very hard decision to. Uh, and I had to contemplate a lot whether to choose Song Min Wan or Kim Young, because I I like both universities, but I had to go with Song Min Wan. <laughs> Song Min Wan um, is your first priority, right? Yes. Then, um, what did you consider to be the most important factor when choosing the three universities? Well, the most important factor for me. Mm, or probably the their reputation mm -hmm. because I'm for for example me I'm studying business administration so I looked first which university has the reputation of uh, of being famous for business and um, for example Tong and Guan and Yonsei and Korean universities were the the first university that you see when you search which uh, South Korea university is famous for business. So I consider that to be my first priority. Next is um, the majors offered. Will they be able to offer me the course that I wanted to study? And also the language taught. I actually wanted to apply to universities that, that were taught in uh, English or at least have English classes. However, it's still mandatory to know Korean. So I applied. Yonsei had English and Korea, but Song Eun-won is 100% in Korean, which is a little tough for me. And Kim Yong, however, has 100% English. So I chose those three universities. Also, I considered location as well, which is, is it either in Seoul? Is it in the city center? Does it have access to a lot of places? Will it be convenient to travel? Will it be, are there a lot of people? Are they, is it too, uh, too far out? Which city is it located? Is it in Daegu, is it in Busan? And also, um, is it too, uh, what, how do you call it? In the rural area or is it in the city? Something like that. Like it depends on your preference as well. And also, how well the university supports foreigners and also lastly i think i don't think everyone should only think about the ranking however if you really want to work in korea or ranking is important to you 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 can consider ranking as well which some people might apply to sky universities like seoul national university korea yonsei or other top universities like kaist the top 10 universities. It also depends on your preference if you want to get into a higher ranking universities as well. It, it seems you're a city person. <laughs> you can tell. Aren't you? <laughs> kind of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, then how long did it take to research them? Well, I actually take one to two weeks to research. I actually have no prior knowledge which universities I should go to. My dad attended Seoul National University, so he just told me, okay, you should go to Seoul National University. But after I research, I find out that Seoul National University is more famous for STEM majors, which my major is social sciences and humanities. I don't, So I don't think it aligns with my uh, with me personally and with my career path. So I didn't choose Seoul National University. Um, it took me a very long time to actually choose which university I wanted to go to. I actually chose Ehua as well, but after a lot of research, I changed and changed and changed. And you really need to research deeply into which universities you really want to go to, which one would actually suit you what you can contribute to them and what they can contribute to you. So it's kind of a very tough decision as well. 
So that's why I took one to two weeks to finalize my decision. Okay. Um, you said your, your dad uh, went to Seoul National University. Yes, that is right. Did he do his uh, bachelor's there? Well, no, uh, it was a scholarship. I believe it was a training scholarship for doctors. My dad is a doctor, so I am not sure which program it is, but he was in Korea for around one year. I, I believe it was training because uh, my dad is a doctor and yeah. Oh, is he, uh, is, he, is he a doctor in Laos now? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, what specifically does he treat? Well, he Patients. specializes uh, in women, women anatomy and women diseases. Yes. Oh, sounds sounds very professional. <laughs> he is very professional. Did he did he influence you a lot uh, when it comes to applying for GKS? When it comes to applying for GKS, my dad has a part, but the person who influenced me the most is actually my mother. She's the reason why I am doing business administration right now. Well, she is a very good businesswoman and I want to follow her path. She really influenced me a lot in every aspect of my life. That is why I'm doing business administration right now. So does she have her own business? Uh, in Laos? Yes. yes. My mom is a businesswoman and the fact that she started everything by herself is actually very, very impressive and very inspiring. And every time I talk about her, I feel so touched because she's the only reason that I am motivated in my life. And she always encouraged me. And she's always there for me. So. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> so so the, uh, is she uh now a ceo yeah she's a ceo she's a ceo okay yes. so you want to take over a business then well i wouldn't necessarily want to say that i want to take over the business because my mom is in the stationary industry I actually want to be in the fashion industry. So oh. I'm thinking, contemplating opening up my own business. And she, um, I don't know, she, doesn't she want you to take over business? Yes, she does. Uh, well, I'm, I probably want to, I would probably take over and then also start my own business as well which wow. my mom also likes fashion. So it's a win-win situation for us. <laughs> Definitely. And I can, I can tell you're ambitious. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, now let's talk about document uh, preparation for GKS. Mm -hmm. uh, of the three methods, notarization, apostille, and consular authentication. Uh, which one did you choose for your documents? Uh, in my country, we don't have apostillation. So I have to uh, use consular authentication. But however, the process is a little bit confusing on my part because I studied in, in an international school where our transcript does not have um, the government seal, which is the red stamp. We had only blue stamp. So I have to go to the uh, Ministry of Education to have it stamped, which is a very tough task. And I have, and after that, I have to go to the, oh, I, oh no. First, I have to go to the notary first because we applying through embassy track, we have to prepare three sets of documents, one for the embassy, M embassy oh four. did i remember something wrong one for the embassy and three for the university so i think four sets four four, four sets set. was it four sets of three sets i'm sorry i don't remember yeah, However, one, no one one, one set of original copies and yes, the and three others other sets of photocopies Yes, so we have to photocopy first and I have to notarize everything. 
to because I cannot submit my original copies, so I have to notarize everything. And then I go to the foreign of, uh, I mean, <laughs> I go to the Ministry of Education to have it stamped. After that, I go to the consular, uh, the, to the consulate office to get it consular authenticated. So, such a long process. Yes. <laughs> it was the hardest part of preparing documents, I believe. Didn't you have just go directly to the Korean consulate and get your documents uh, consulate authenticated? Uh, no, I didn't go to the Korean consulate. However, I only after the that I received the scholarship, then I go to the consulate. But however, we still had to have the Lao consular authentication first before we can get the Korean one. So I have to go through every process first and then Korean consulate after. Oh, is that a special rule for Lao yes. students? Yes, we cannot go to the Korean consulate right away. We have to get the Lao consular authentication first. So before, so before we get the consular authentication, we have to get the red seal first, which is only my problem because my school does not offer the red seal in my transcript, uh, in my diploma and transcript, so I have to get it stamped. In other because schools, I think they have. Is it because you went to uh, the international school? Yes. So we don't have like the red stamp, so I have to go to the foreign, uh, to the Ministry of Education, like, like, again, and let them stamp, and then go to the consular of consulate and then go to the Korean consulate again. <laughs> okay. Oh, that, uh, so were you taught in English at school? Yes. Yes, my school was taught in English. We have two curriculums, uh, English and then Lao in the afternoon. Okay. No wonder your English is so good. Thank you so much. So is yours. <laughs> That that's my job. <laughs> yeah, I I was I was forced to speak and write in English, so Your I have English no choice. is very good. <laughs> you have no choice. Thank you, thank you. Um, that's why that's why I helped you. Uh, yes. Get some information on GKS, right? In English. Yes, a lot. Great. Um. All right. Next question. Mm, let's see. Uh, how much did it cost to prepare your documents in US dollar? Oh, this is actually a tough question because I have to uh, prepare you my documents many times. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, well, for the first time only during the application, because I have to, even after, during the application, before the application, during the application, after at the application, and before coming to Korea, I have to legalize, legalize, legalize documents many oh. times. But the first time uh, for before the application, which is preparing, I have to notarize my awards, which because I have to copy them. So I have to notarize them first to uh, certify that they're true copies. I submitted a lot of documents. So the costs were very expensive. For me, at least, in my country, the documents I paid for the first time only for the not notarization only was around two hundred dollars, wow. two hundred US dollars, for the first wow. time only. Yes, and for the awards only, I think and the diploma, family register, and transcripts were another cost too. <laughs> So it's very expensive, but it also varies. It depends on how many documents you are legalizing or certifying. Mm -hmm. um, the reason uh, it, it costs a lot uh, is because you, you have to go first to the Ministry of Education. Oh, the reason and... it costed a lot were because I had a lot of documents. And also, 
but only for the notarization, it was $200. For the Ministry of Education, it was free, but the consular authentication, it was $5 per one paper. So it depends on, on, on it. But the $200, I, I, I don't remember how much for each paper was. I think it was like $2 for each paper, for each page. So I had a lot of papers, so it was a lot. And it, because I had a lot of copies as well. Uh, did you have to get your documents notarized because uh, they're, 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 they're all written in uh, Lao language? No, I have to, I went to the notary because I have to submit them in copy form. And before you can consular authenticate your copied form, you have to make it a certified true copy first. So I have to certify it and then go to the consular for them to uh, no, uh, that's why you went to a, that's why you went to a notary uh, notary public yes to, to get your photocopies uh, notarized first yes yes uh, okay I thought you didn't have to get your documents notarized uh, as long as your documents are authenticated by a, a Korean consul but uh, the Korean yeah, consul will only only authenticate your documents if they're uh, notarized, right? If they're Lao consular authenticated. And before the consular will authenticate your documents, you have to notarize it first. So oh, it's okay. a step by step. But the only problem I faced was my diploma and transcript because I had to go to the Ministry of Education. But the rest, it's, uh, it was fine. So I have to go to the notary, Ministry of Education, Lao consular, and then Korean consular. So did you get your, um, so you said by the time you applied for GKS, you're not graduated, right? Yes, I graduated. Did you, yes. Did you submit, did you submit your, um, what is it called? Did you submit your uh, certificate Diploma? of expected graduation? Oh no, I graduated right. Uh, I graduated before GKS application opened. I graduated in June, I believe, May or June, and mm -hmm. GKS application opened on September. So I was pretty lucky to graduate so, so, before. So, did you get your uh, degree and your uh, academic transcripts notarized first as well? Yes. I had to get everything notarized first. Oh, actually, my transcript, I had to submit the real one because they don't allow, uh, they don't allow copied ones. My country, it's a, it's a little bit hard, so. Yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, it's very complicated. And I have to go to the office every, every every day i think <laughs> it was very hard right um, and were there extra documents you submitted other than the ones required by the niid um would you count the awards as required documents because i submitted everything required but the extra documents i submitted my internship certificate um as well as my previous works, like work experience, for example, like I did graphic design posters or the uh, campaigns that I created, my social enterprise, my previous business income statements, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and many GKS applicants have trouble filling out the GPA section. Uh, it's because some high schools only issue academic transcripts. They're not divided by semester. How was it for you? Oh, uh, for this, it's my, my academic transcript was, we divided in terms and each term we have GPA. And also we have it, the final CGPA as well. So it was relatively very easy for me to fill out the GPA section. 
No, it's because you went to an uh, international school, so yeah. everything was uh, suitable for the um, international system, I guess. Yes. Uh, well, easy for you, no problem at all. <laughs> yes. And um, did you submit a topic or an English score? I don't have topic, so I submitted CPE. Uh, CPE is a Cambridge proficiency exam, exam. which uh, has uh, the Council of Europe scale as well, the same as IELTS, okay. which I submitted CPE instead of IELTS, but it's very similar. I submitted C2, mm -hmm. C2 which is similar to nine IELTS. Uh, is it considered an of official English score? Yes. Uh, CPE is actually, uh, for example, IELTS, you could get up until nine, but CPE mm -hmm. in that scale, it's actually higher than nine. Oh, you could wow. get a higher score than nine. It's a Cambridge official exam, okay. which has no. the same scale as IELTS. And what was your level? C2. C2. C2 is, uh, is it? Nine IELTS. Equivalent to, equivalent IELTS to 9. nine IELTS. Point zero? Yes. Yes, nine point So zero. basically, you got a perfect score. <laughs> basically, <laughs> for IELTS, yes, but for CPE, no. Because CPE, you can get higher than. IELTS. What's the highest level in CPE? C2 is the highest, but you still have like the levels like C, B, A, and C2. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. That's, that's <laughs> impressive. Thank you. Um, and what did you submit for your proof of citizenship and your parents' proof of citizenship? Uh, I submitted family register uh, from only one family register because it, everything is included. However, Songun Wan asked me for a proof of my uh, parents' citizenship as well. So they asked for parents' passport copy, as well as um, certificate of relationship with mother, which I submitted my birth certificate. Okay. So uh, are you saying you submitted uh, your parents' local ID? Uh, passport. Passport. Uh. Yes, passports. Okay. Um, and who uh, wrote a letter of recommendation for you? Oh, it's uh, he was actually the head di head director of my school. Uh, I asked him to write a letter of recommendation for me, and he uh, he agreed upon doing it, and. I didn't, I didn't tell him anything. I just asked him for his uh, help on writing a letter of recommendation. I sent, and I sent him the format from the KGSP form. And I sent him that and I asked him and he's like, okay, he was gonna do it for me. And I also asked, because previous years, I heard that we needed two recommendation letters. So I asked to, one, one is my closest teacher, which he was my economics teacher. And the other one was the head director. I asked two of them, but I, I ended up choosing my head director's letter of recommendation because he divided it into, into four. So, yeah. Did you make a draft for them for him? No, I didn't make any drafts at all. I just sent the raw, the raw format that KJSP provided, uh, that NIAED provided, I just sent him the raw file with the one page and he just filled everything. Until now, I haven't seen the letter of recommendation. I see. How long did it take to get it from him? It was 10 days, exactly 10 days. Uh, he is a busy man, so he, he took some time and also it was during COVID-19. So it was very hard to travel anywhere and it was hard to receive it from him. So he had to drop it off at school and I have to go and pick it up at school. 
And as a busy man, he's a big favor for you. Yes, which I'm very grateful. <laughs> okay, um, so did you do any extracurricular activities or part-time work during your high school years? I didn't do any part-time jobs during my high school years. However, I actually did an internship where I, me and my classmate, we were chosen by our business teacher to work, uh, to be under supervision of the daughter of the CEO of a coffee brand in our country, which is very well known for their, their coffee. And they're a pretty, uh, a pretty very good and good brand. We did digital marketing and we did how do you utilize the use of social media to its best potential? How to break into a new market to attract more teenagers, to create campaigns and uh, discounts, as well as uh, promotions to attract more customers, especially in the teenage group, because their brand is more focused on adults and the older generations. So they're trying to widen their market and trying to enter the new market. That's why they're recruiting a young, young students to have the view and perspective of young people and then bring more ideas on how to attract more teenagers. I did that internship, which gave me a lot of experiences and I learned a lot of things, which I recommend every uh, studying career dreamers to do which is to do internships and to join as much as possible honestly and I did a lot of extracurricular activities as well because I was the student council in my school I was one of the officers and we as officers we have a lot of responsibilities we have to arrange events we did um Halloween we had to arrange everything by ourselves we have to make the props, we have to make the schedules, we have to invite guests. Uh, we also celebrated Peace Day. We had to create performances, make a booth. We, I also, we also participated in Sports Day, which we divide into house team colors. We also have Valentine's Day, of course, International Day, Teacher's Day, and everything we had to arrange a lot of events. I also participate in a lot of volunteering activities uh, and so, mu so much more. And I really want everyone watching right now to start uh, attending everything you can because it really benefits and helps you a lot, especially if you want a scholarship or if you plan to apply to anywhere. Yeah, uh, the more you have, um experiences and then the more you talk about it uh during both uh your personal statement and uh the interview yes okay but as far as i know it's not easy for uh high schoolers to have an internship yes that is why uh it's actually it's very not common to have an internship during your high school years. I was actually only grade 11 or 10 at that time. So I was 16 or 17 at that time, which I admit that is it was extremely difficult, especially having to carry the weight of doing the responsibilities and you have never experienced working before. Uh, the we were lucky because our teacher knew the daughter of the CEO and she wanted to recruit college students from abroad. However, because of the COVID situation, they were talking and my teacher and she, because she was a panel during our business proposal, uh, she was a, one of the panels because in our business class, we had to present, we had to have a business proposal and we had to present our business ideas and uh, everything with our business proposal, yeah. So she was one of the panels and she said that two students caught her eye. So she asked if she could recruit us and the teacher asked us if we wanted to do it. 
and then we got the internship. So uh, you're lucky uh, that you had an internship uh, thanks yes. to your teachers. Yes. Yeah. So even if um, other studying Korea dreamers uh, in their high school years uh, do not have an internship experience, uh, they still uh, could try for their uh, extra other extracurricular activities like uh, volunteering experiences, yes. yeah, other like um, sporting sporting events yes uh any events even though it is not re uh, related to your major or even if you think it's ir irrelevant it is everything is actually irrelevant because everything gives you certain skills that you could acquire joining any kinds of events is very important even joining dance competitions like you gain and you gain a new skill such as dancing and also through the competition, it, it, it's the people that you meet, you gain interpersonal skills, you gain intrapersonal skills, you understand yourself better, you understand how to interact with others better, how to work with each other. And it really shows how you actually can work with others as well as how you manage yourself, your time, being able to interact with other people, being able to learn new things. It will really show the GKS judges that you're not just a bookworm, but you are you're capable of doing a lot of things. You're more than just you're more, you're just more. You you really you're more can than, do, yeah. Yeah, merely uh studying. Yes. In the chair. All right. Yes. So everything, everything you do can be uh meaningful. Yes. Everything, even though if you think I'm sorry, I'm studying software engineering, but I'm going to an art competition. It's still very meaningful. Don't think that your achievements are not relevant just because it might not be uh, recognized by others. But in the end, it's what you learn from what you did is what really matters. That's actually a very uh, good point. Um, so I hope our studying career dreamers uh, yeah, take uh, take it uh, very seriously, and then and then apply to their application. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, and did you receive any aw awards during your high school years? You say you had a lot of awards. <laughs> yes. Uh, um. Award. Yes, but <laughs> yeah, everything actually... everything can be meaningful. Yes, I re I actually received a lot of awards because I joined a lot of competitions. Uh, my school, uh, I'm lucky too because my school recognized talents, so they actually choose students and uh, choose students to participate in a lot of activities. I started competing since I entered first grade. <laughs> I ever since I entered first grade. I have always been interested in everything. So our school had an ambassador's competition, which you have to make your own speech with the theme and you have to give a speech in front of everyone and they would choose who is the best, et cetera. And I started since the first grade. I joined the competition every year, even though I did not win, I still joined every year. I never gave up until the last competition. I still continued, continued. And every year, I would receive a uh, student of the year awards every year. And uh, also, I, I actually, I went to a competition first time abroad in Thailand when I was 11 years old. It was a science and maths competition where people around the world gather to uh, compete. I was 11 and I was represented science. It was my first time abroad. And after that, I keep on entering a lot of competitions. I won fourth place overall in my country for science and maths competition. It was an Olymp uh, kind of like an IQ test also. And also I joined science competitions in Malaysia twice. I was an exchange student in Japan. 
like even if my uh main main major is business business administration despite that i joined a lot of science competitions because i was a science student but it's still very meaningful well but it's surprising that um as a high school student you had an exchange student exchange experience yes uh actually there is a lot for exchange students for example 13 to 15 i got my first exchange program to japan when i was 13 years old and my second one was when i was 16 or 17 to america yes and i also joined in a debate competition which will be taking place in the philippines as well but i didn't i couldn't make it yeah how how uh how long how long was the uh, student exchange program for japan it was around eight days only and for america it was one month oh okay i thought i thought it was about uh, at year? least six months six, oh, months six months uh it's kind of like a cultural exchange also but there is also one scholarship for high school students which they'll be studying in japan for one year as well mm -hmm. but i didn't apply for it wow you did a lot <laughs> yes <laughs> ever since i was young i've always like, been interested that's why i always tell the ones that want to apply for scholarships to start now it's never too late to do anything so you should start now earn as many achievements as you can gain as many uh, experiences as you can it, like everything you see join them doesn't matter what it is join them you will learn a lot from them is it because your personality is uh, outgoing or did your parents influence you to do something uh, active i'm i would say i'm a very active person by nature and my parents are rather supportive more than influential they're very supportive of me doing whatever, and they know my interests, my interests, where I'm interested in academics and a lot of extracurricular activities. So they would, if they hear something or know something about uh, exchange programs, scholarships, or anything, they would say, oh, are you interested in this? Uh, where I'm actually happy that my parents are supportive as well. So. I can do anything that I want, and they would always support me and be behind me. Yeah. Oh. You're, luck, uh, you're so lucky to have like, <laughs> such a great parents. Yeah, I agree. Around you. Okay, um, now let's talk about GKS interview.